Hey guys, what's happening? Check it out. All right, the caps came in for the uh, Solaritas capacitor project. All right, take a look. So in the Amazon ad, they said NinjaCon. And let me show you, take a quick look. I mean, obviously you can tell if they're green, they're not NinjaCon, but they're just as good as NinjaCon. Um, at least they're Sanyo. So they are Japanese capacitors. Uh, where's the Sanyo? All right. Sanyo. So, all right, cool. Not so bummed. Um, all right, so these are the uh, 50 volt, 1000 microfarad caps. I'm going to solder onto the uh, 2240 drivers. So, let me go to the printer. So, in the first part of the video, um, actually, by the way, the, the thumbnail is just, I'm just joking around. Am I crazy? Why am I crazy? I don't know. What am I doing over here? Um, okay, so uh, I gotta take this printer down. And the goal, remember, if you didn't see the first part of the video, the goal was to see if I could actually uh, kind of keep the current down at 1.5 amp and add these capacitors and maybe pick up, a, use the capacitor as a buffer to uh, help with the uh, skipping steps at hard accelerations. So, um, yeah, we'll see if that, that works. But I, I went in the first video, I kind of explained my theory and what I was trying to accomplish. Um, I mean, it might or might not work. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Because really, I'm just adding it as a, like a storage capacity, like a buffer. But the real way to do it is, I mean, to hook this up to like a an oscilloscope and figure out what's going on or some kind of uh, way to capture what's what's happening with the voltage drop. Um, yeah, I could do it with a multi... I mean, it would be hard to see with a multimeter, but you need some way to be able to like, capture like what's going on. Um, you could do it in an oscilloscope or... Some you know you can I've seen multimeters that connect to a computer where you can actually capture what's actually happening. Um, all right, so I'm gonna take these off and I'm gonna bring the printer over here and we're gonna solder these caps on, do our speed test. All right, so before I do that, I'm actually gonna use my ESR meter to make sure the caps actually work and are ready to what they're supposed to be. Because um, I would suck to put these on and have them not work right or whatever. Um, because I actually have gotten new bad caps for. So, um, all right, so I'm going to test at least four of these things, and I'll show you how that works, if I can do it with one hand. Turn this on. It's basically, uh, and I'll just do that on here, so i make sure this isn't short. All right, that's pretty close in range. It's supposed to be 1,000 microfarad. So it also tests the, the internal resistance of the device. So I'm just going to go through and t touch each of these, but it's funny, this is actually one of the first things I ever designed, this little case thing right here, this little desk, desk mount. A few years, uh, like four years ago probably. Um, five years ago, for sure. All right, so I tested all four capacitors. Um, this one actually tested low around 950. All right, let me show you there real fast. Nine fifty eight, so I'm probably not going to use this capacitor. So I'm trying to keep them in pairs as cl close as I can. So, like I'm gonna these were these were over a thousand. These were like nine seventy five. Um, so I'm gonna try to keep these in a pair. So I'm gonna try to keep these on the X motors and the Y motors to be as close as possible. So even like when I designed the printer, I actually made sure I didn't cut any of the wires, like the stepper motor wires. I, I mean, normally I like to cut the wires, and make them shorter, but because I'm trying to keep all the resistance exactly the same. I'm trying to keep everything as symmetrical as possible. So basically by cutting wires, you want even the stepper motor wires to be the same length. So you have the same resistance. Um, because you want everything to be as equal as possible. Well, look at the camera that picks this up. All right, so I'm gonna sell out of the capacitors. Uh, that should be positive. That should be the main power in right here. And that should be the ground. So I'm going to solder the positive lead here, and then I'm going to lead here. So I'm going to do for these four 2240s, because that's X and Y. Um, so like I said, I'm going to try to keep them paired up as close as possible with the uh, rating, capacitor rating. So there is another voltage input, too, on the ground, but that's 3.3 volt, and that powers the IC. 
Um, so the main supply voltage going back to the motors A and B is right here. Alright, here's the first driver. So I put shrink wrap on the leads in case I whack the leads. I don't want to short them out. So um, the cool thing is a lot of these these 3D printer boards have fuses now. So um, all right, yeah, it's exactly. So if I whack it, it's not gonna get out of control. So I'm not gonna short. Yeah, because I have a lot, I have a lot going on here. I'm always messing around with it. So and I also knew these wires would be in the way. So um, kind of put it in a way where it's going to be kind of out of the way of the fan duck. I mean, high enough to kind of clear those wires. I mean, like I said, I've mentioned before in some other videos, but it would be nice if they actually made some sort of like go-between board where we could actually add these capacitors or, or external MOSFETs. All right, there we go. So when I recently designed my fan duck in this, my, one of my last videos, um, I knew I was going to be adding these capacitors, so I kind of designed it a way to do that. So let's see if it blows up. <laughs> Plug it in. And I hope it doesn't blow up, but you never know. It didn't blow up yet. So I wonder if this is actually, uh, I guess I never looked at the board schematic of the Monster Aid, but I wonder if these are individual rails fitting the drivers. Or if it's just one solid 24 volt rail. So if it was just one big 24 volt rail, these would be more evenly distributed, but also help the whole 24 volt rail. All right, so I'm going to do the same test I've done the 4th of July. Um, so I'll come back when it gets ready to go to high speed mode. So I'm going to put down a first layer, and I'll come back when it gets ready to do a hard acceleration. So before it was skipping steps at this speed. All right, make sure we got the right offset and set. Oh, I forgot. Uh, give it a second. It's going to need to prime. All right, so we're getting to the end of the first layer. So what it's going to do is it's going to do a really fast 35 or 30k move this way, and that's actually awesome. That's where it would skip steps. All right, pass that test. All right, I'll come back when it comes to other moves. So another place where it failed was uh, when I started doing like the infill. So even with that new uh, those air ducts, my drivers are maintaining good temp. All right, so it's gonna be a big move right here. This is where it failed before, too, as well. Alright, I'll wait for the next big move, and we'll wait for the uh, info. Alright, pass another test. If you didn't watch the first part of the video, or part one, another idea was that I could run these at a lower current, but have the reserve capacity when I do those hard accelerations, so I didn't have to crazy overheat these motors. I mean, I know I could just keep on increasing the current, and then it would solve a lot of these issues, but I'm trying to keep it lower, but I have that big buffer, you know, to be able to pick up that, that slack, you know, the voltage drop. All right, so my 30,500 millimeter per second test uh, worked fine. Let's do the original one that was really feeling a lot. Um, 112 meter box, uh, 35K, what's it called? Um, this is it. Um, this is the one on for why it really failed badly. So I had to, after this, this one failed so badly, I had to step it down to 30, 30K, and then I started stepping up the um, the motor current and all that stuff too. So, um, so 30k passed every single move. Everything passed 30k. So this second test should be pretty good because the motor I've actually thoroughly heated up now. Drivers are maintaining like the, that new fan duct that I designed actually worked, so that's maintaining. All right, I'll come back when this thing gets uh, ready to go to the, the next layer, or once the first layer is done. So it's really the, the 35k travels 
that's when it moves really fast, that's where I'm skipping steps. So that's actually what I'm looking at, are the travel moves. All right, so it's getting ready to do a big 35, 35K that move this way. All right, this definitely failed before, so um, let's see what happens. All right, looking good, no skip steps. All right, here we go, another big move. Here we go. Let's go about this direction. All right, getting a hiccup. Got my kid here with me, checking things out. to finish printing but I guess my theory was correct I guess I'm not crazy yeah because before it failed in Y it failed in X it fell in all the different kinds of directions so um, all right so put a link down below if you want to try the passers um, I think they might have sold out I'm not sure but like I said I originally I thought they were in, in the picture they showed Nichicon but then you got the sand you know I'm pretty excited that I can actually run this thing, at least at these speeds, at 1.5 amp, and uh, be able to hit those hard accelerations, the big travel moves. All right, guys. Ooh.